A new curriculum is coming out in most K-12 schools in the United States, and this means that math problems will be longer and more open-ended. This is great, as there'll be lots of opportunities for you to struggle and grow your brain, which is when you learn the most. More open and less leading problems can be frustrating if you approach them with a fixed mindset. But if you approach them with a growth mindset, with the idea, I can do this, and with the willingness to try different things, you'll do well and the approach will be really good for you. This is true for all levels of math. It's extremely beneficial to struggle and to make mistakes on math problems, as that will create synapse firing and brain growth. The most successful students are not the ones who don't mess up. They are the ones who mess up and learn from it and continue on. Something else that's really important to know about math is that being good at math does not mean being fast at math. In fact, the opposite may be true. Mathematicians, who we could think of as the world's top math people, are some of the slowest math thinkers I've met. I don't say that to disrespect mathematicians. I work with many mathematicians, but they're not usually fast math thinkers. They're deep mathematical thinkers. This is Laurent Schwartz. He won the Fields Medal, which is the top math prize. It's like winning an Oscar in math. He struggled in school because his school valued speed, and he was one of the slowest math thinkers in his class. After he became very successful, he wrote an autobiography, and this is how he describes his school days. I was always deeply uncertain about my own intellectual capacity. I thought I was unintelligent. And it is true that I was, and still am, rather slow. I need time to seize things because I always need to understand them fully. Towards the end of 11th grade, I secretly thought of myself as stupid. I worried about this for a long time. I'm still just as slow. At the end of 11th grade, I took the measure of the situation and came to the conclusion that rapidity doesn't have a precise relation to intelligence. What is important is to deeply understand things and their relations to each other. This is where intelligence lies. The fact of being quick or slow isn't really relevant. Many strong mathematical thinkers, like Lawrence Swartz, think deeply and slowly and like to understand things fully. If you are one of those people, do not be put off by people who may be faster. That isn't important. What is important, to repeat Lauren Schwartz, is to deeply understand things and the way they relate to each other. It's fine, good even, to think slowly about math, and it is really good to think deeply and ask questions that will allow more depth. Questions like, why does this work? How is this method connected to other methods? What would a drawing of the situation look like? And it's important, if you're a slower thinker, never to think it means you cannot be a math person. It is great to think deeply and carefully, to fully understand, to ask questions. We need those thinkers in math. Doing well at math is not about being quick or slow. It's about thinking about connections, thinking deeply. Lauren Schwartz talks about deeply understanding things. But how do you do that? In the next and last three sessions of the course, we are going to give you learning strategies which will help you learn deeply and well. So take the ideas from this lesson now and write them down for someone your own age. Imagine a friend of yours missed the class and you wanted them to learn what you learned about mistakes and the importance of struggle and the need to change ideas about speed and math. So write a paragraph for them now.